This week is slightly different than weeks in the past, largely because uh, you'll be expected not simply to read and do, but also to reflect, that is, think deeply about your work thus far in the course, integrating what you have learned for presentation and the Country Comparison blog. In this brief uh, overview, I will walk you through both the idea of reflection, but also the additional sites with uh, information that you may want to use to add uh, to the information already on your blog. Then uh, some ideas about cleaning up and editing your blog for the instructions. You'll also participate in the discussion. Because the blog will also lead to your class presentation and your final project, let's take a look very quickly first at the meaning of reflection. That is, you'll be collecting a lot of information, and so the idea will be to integrate this information into a meaningful and systematic presentation. Then let's look at the grading rubric followed by a brief tour of the additional websites and information that will be available to you to add to as factual information to your country comparison blog. And then we'll return again to what is reflection. So first, uh, the idea of reflection actually comes out of the work of John Dewey. Here I've pulled some from an article by Carol Rogers. The full article can be found uh, in readings on the course a navigation panel. But reflection is a meaning-making process that moves a learner from one experience and experiences also reading and thinking into the next with a deeper understanding of its relationships and connections to other experiences and ideas. It's a systematic, rigorous, and disciplined way of thinking with its roots in scientific inquiry. Reflection takes place in communities and in interaction with others and requires attitudes that value personal and intellectual growth, both in oneself and in others. So let's take a quick look at the, uh, the country comparison blog rubric, how, you, how your rubric will be evaluated, uh, and then move along to these additional resources. So first is the rationale, and, and the, this information, the rationale and the brief description might go outside the actual table you created. So it's the rationale for your country choices and thesis statement. Uh, I recognize that in many cases, your country choices were really, uh, they weren't really choices, they were assigned. But, but think through the rationale for the countries, the two countries you will be comparing, and try to think about a thesis that is uh, a, a reason or uh, a, an articulation of hypotheses, a theory about why these two country choices would make sense. Then a brief description of the countries, the table, the CEDAW and CEDAW OP status. And when we say five meaningful indicators, uh, I, mean, I will go through some of those uh, with you with the actual blog. But this means to review back the weekly through the weekly assignments and think about what those indicators are and how they fit into uh, the overall blog assignment. Then just briefly right now, some summary and conclusions. You're going to be revising this blog again, so, so uh, focus now on getting the information you want into the blog and then uh, then how you're going to integrate it for a meaningful comparison uh, and integration. I've added three very interesting uh, vodcasts on Saudi Arabia and women in Saudi Arabia because you can, and, and with these you're going to be able to see a timeline uh, for Saudi women. But then here are some additional resources that you may find uh, interesting and useful uh, in the development of, again, factual information for your blog. When I complete going over the actual data sites, we can quickly look at uh, the blog and where some of these data uh, might fit. So first, 
This is called the Art of the, the Association of Religion Data Archives. I'm going to click and open this. Many have probably seen this, but with this, the Art of Data, you can look at individual countries, uh, regional profiles, data sources. So let's take a quick look at Afghanistan. And with the Theart of Data, you can see that you, you can find the dominant religion, the uh, a level of, of religious freedom or religious uh, uh, discrimination, religious control. This may not be the best source for socioeconomic data, but you can find this here. Often you'll find these data do not match perfectly with some of the other data sources that you have. This will be a puzzle and you'll have to, to make decisions about which data source uh, that you uh, plan to use. So next is the global UN Global Database on Violence Against Women. Perhaps a useful site. Uh, but, you know, again, these are, this is information that you can use or store, uh, think about for this presentation or for your later work, uh, either at Queens or elsewhere. Next is uh, the CIA World Factbook. Uh, again, this is data that may be replicated in some of the other sources. You may or may not want to use it, but you can find a lot of information about uh, the countries that you have chosen uh, in this uh, site. There's a, a place at the top for countries, and the countries are then listed alphabetically. And finally, there's a site to the, a, a link to the World Bank, and uh, again, you can find all kinds of information about uh, specific countries, uh, about uh, the global the global environment. You can find all kinds of economic data on the countries. So, so you can see that you have a lot of a lot of information, a lot of sources uh, from which to draw for the blog. So let's go quickly to the blog assignment itself. And I'm going to open here the the actual template. Now let's take a look at this because I think that many of you uh, may have taken this more literally than it was intended. Uh, but this is a data collection tool, a country name. Again, just brief description. You you won't want to use all of the blog template in your final paper, or perhaps not even in your final presentation. Perhaps the brief description and the, the uh, rationale for the selection of the countries might best go in a paragraph outside of the table. Uh, form of government, uh, again, most of you or many of you have filled this in. This is simple, yes or no. One in which people have asked uh, questions uh, it has to do with the Constitution. And remember, we had a full week on uh, the Constitution. Mostly, the most important item for Constitution is first, does the Constitution uh, specify uh, gender parity or gender rights or the rights of women? And two, did that article or did that Constitution or that wording in the Constitution take place before or after that country or your country became a CEDAW party? Next is reservations, and perhaps the country you have studied entered no reservations, in which case the, the, the information is irrelevant. Dominant religion, uh, uh, this is information you can get from the Theart site I just showed you. And then uh, gender inequality index, remember that both share seats in parliament and labor force participation rates are subscales of the gender inequality index. You could, might also want to enter things like uh, the uh, per, the income per person. You can find that in the sites I just sh I just uh, showed you that are, they're in the folder uh, for for this week. So returning now to that folder, uh, remember that you have the following sites to use. Uh, from which you can draw information, add data. 
uh, clean up your blog, pick what you want, make sure that you have what it, whatever it is that you think will help you in terms of supporting, creating and supporting a thesis. Uh, again, you'll have plenty of time between now and the end of the semester to reflect, to think about what you want to say in your final paper and in the final presentation of the blog. This was a complex set of, of uh, data collection tools, and it results in a complex set of data. Much to think about. So reflect, but also complete the collection process uh, and, and begin the process of reflection as you go so that you end up with a matrix that has meaningful information that is organized along the lines of what it is, uh, what your thesis might be, why you chose these two countries, what the comparison that you will be using means. I think we're all looking forward to sharing, uh, sharing the blogs and seeing what happens in interaction with each other uh, as we learn more and more about the rights of women, and especially CEDAW and the rights of women across these various countries.